Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Shomita Roy, pediatrician, and today we are going to discuss an important topic for your practical exam, and that is gastrointestinal system examination. So basically, students, if you are knowing the main framework of GI system examination, then it's going to be helpful for you in all the three systems, namely GI, GU, that is genitourinary system. Let's take an example. If you are getting a case of nephrotic syndrome, then also this particular system is going to be helpful for you with a little bit of add-ons, which I'll be telling you later on in my session. Okay. And also if you are getting a case on hematological system, like let's take an example, thalassemia, then also this particular GI system examination is going to be helpful for you. Okay. So let's begin with GI system examination. So the main prerequisite of the examination is exposure okay students and how you are going to do the exposure of the patient so the exposure should be from mid chest to mid thigh okay why i'll be telling you later on okay so for the examination there is two part one is upper alimentary tract okay and the next one is examination of the abdomen clear so what you are going to see in upper elementary tract yes you are going to look for the gums teeth tongue the tonsils okay and so on okay and next we will go for the examination of the abdomen proper right so examination of abdomen starts with basically you know students there are four major parts so what are they starts with inspection then you'll go for palpation third one is your percussion and the fourth one is your auscultation okay i'll be detailing them soon okay so for inspection we are going to divide the abdomen into nine regions okay so what are the nine regions students i'll be telling you and how you are going to divide that also i'll be telling you okay so first you we will draw two vertical lines okay and then we'll be drawing two horizontal lines okay so the vertical lines are drawn taking two points okay what are those two points we will start from mid clavicular point above and will end till mid inguinal point below and there we will be drawing an imaginary line okay students this and the same holds true for the other side also clear now we will be doing the horizontal lines how the first horizontal line we will be doing in trans pyloric plane okay and what is that this is the midpoint between the suprasternal notch above and symphysis pubis below. Okay. And this is going to touch the lower end of the bridge. Okay. So this is the first horizontal line you should draw. And the second horizontal line will be drawn from the uppermost level of the iliac crest on both the sides. Okay. So thus you have already divided the abdomen into nine regions. Okay. So let's read out what are the nine regions. So students do not forget. Okay, let's go clockwise. In exam also, if you are being asked, always go, go clockwise so that you don't miss any of the regions. Okay, so this is your starting from this region. This is your right hypochondrium. Okay, this region is your epigastrium. Okay, this is your left hypochondrium next moving on to this region and this is your left lumbar region then this is your peri umbilical region okay next this one is your right lumbar region thus completing all the nine regions of abdomen clear okay so in inspection what are the things you'll look for? So basically, we will be seeing the shape of the abdomen, okay? Whether it's 
distended or not, whether it's scaphoid or not, okay, each of the points are having its own significance, okay. Next, we'll be looking for any visible scar is there or not, any stria is there or not, okay. Next, we'll be looking for the umbilicus, whether it is everted or flushed, okay, like you get in case of ascites, okay. Next, you will be looking for the any venous prominence, okay. Next, you will be looking for the movement of abdomen with respiration, okay. Next, you will be looking for the hernial orifices, okay. So, for this reason, we have expose the child till mid thigh. Why? Because you have to look for the inguinal region as well. Clear? And what are the other sites for hernia? Or, uh, what are the other sites for hernia you will look for? One is umbilical, one is supraumbilical, and the other one is inguinal region. Okay? So next, we will be doing palpation. Okay? So basically, students, there are two types of palpation. Number one is superficial palpation and the other one is deep palpation. Clear? So, what are you going to see in superficial palpation? Okay, for palpation, you have to stand on the right side of patients. This is known to all, right? So, in superficial palpation, we will be looking for the general feel of the abdomen, whether it's a normal feel or dowy feel or cystic feel okay dowy we get in tubercular abdomen okay cystic we get in ascites okay next after feel we will look for any muscle guarding okay next we will be looking for any rebound tenderness okay and so on and yes temperature also okay now the main part is the deep palpation here you will be doing a region wise palpation okay all the nine regions as i told you you'll go clockwise and you'll look for whether any lump is present or not if any lump is present you need to describe the lump okay what is the size what is some first you have to describe it in terms of site okay what is the site of the lump what is the size how is the mar how are the margins what is the consistency is there any tenderness or is there or not is it movable okay so this way you have to describe the lump if it is present next you have to go for an organ palpation and what are the organs you look for yes first liver in your right hypochondria next you look for spleen i mean you'll palpate for spleen okay in your left hypochondria and some book says GB, that is gallbladder. This is important for surgery, but not for your pediatrics, okay? And if it's a case of GU, okay, that is a genitourinary system, then here you have to mention the kidneys, okay, and the balotability of kidneys, okay? So as I told you, some extra points you should add to your GU system, that is the balotability of kidney and this is done by, by manual palpation. Clear students? Okay, so now on doing deep palpation, suppose you have got a palpable liver, okay? So how you are going to describe the liver? So basically first thing is you have to mention the how much below the right costal margin you are getting the liver, okay? That is the degree of palpability. You can say it in terms of centimeter or finger. Centimeter is preferable, okay? So, after that is the first point, okay? So, next you have to say the how is the surface, okay? Is there any nodularity, okay? Next is the how is the margin or border, Okay, is it regular or irregular? Next, you have to say, how is the consistency of liver, whether it is soft, firm, or hard. So, normal liver is firm in consistency, right? 
Next is you have to mention whether it is tender or not. Clear? A tender hepatomegaly you find in CCF, hepatitis. Okay. Next, you have to mention whether the left quadrant of liver is palpable or not. This is very important, students. Okay. Next, a very, very important point is you have to measure the liver span and for that you need to take help of orbition as well okay so these are the points under which you should describe your palpable liver okay so until and unless you are doing liver span it's of no use okay because this may be a case of drop down liver as well okay so you cannot say it's a case of hepatomegaly unless you are doing the liver span okay well then the same things for spleen as well okay now moving on to the okay in palpation one more important thing is fluid thrill this is very important this will be positive in yes as it is okay well this thing is a part of your palpation and that is also superficial palpation this thing you cannot miss students okay well next is your percussion and here we look for shifting dullness okay that's also positive in ascites right okay and the last point is your auscultation where we look for the peristaltic sound and for auscultation you need to keep your diaphragm of stetho at least for one minute okay well and what are the other things you may get in percussion if there is any brewing arterial brewing that may be positive in percussion okay well so i feel that's all about your gi system examination now in gu as i told there will you should look for the renal Balotability and one more thing is renal angle tenderness. Okay, these are the two things you should look extra in your GU examination, and that is a part of your palpation. Okay, students. So hope this session was useful to you. And if you are having any doubts, just let me know in the comment box so that I'll be happy to help you. Okay, so thank you.